Hi, this is Chris Lavin from Extreme Polishing Systems. We're coming to you today from Pompano Beach, Florida, and we are very happy to have Alejandro Luna here from uh, HP Spartaco. And we have uh, the Professor Robert joining us here from uh, New Crete Surgeons. Anyways, uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing a very highly uh, People want this floor. This is a floor that we did at Miley Cyrus's. This is our famous uh, Silver Centurion glitter floor. And we're also gonna be doing an orange glitter floor today. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the floor over to Robert. And Robert's gonna explain the process that we're gonna do. And uh, I'm sure okay. Andrew, you're gonna speak up when needed to. Absolutely. All right. Okay, great. So welcome everyone. We're here on day five of, uh, of our class. We're gonna do epoxy as Chris said um, what we're gonna do first we're gonna put down a base coat your base coat is gonna be a uh, generally a solid color that complements your top uh, coat so if you have a dark colored top coat you might want to put down a black a gray if you have a light colored uh, top coat decorative coat you're gonna put down a light colored base coat okay so what we're using first today we're gonna put in uh, Sparta coat pure okay it's a one-to-one -one mixture it's a polyaspartic kit uh, it's gonna dry in about an hour and a half I believe um, the kit that we have the way they sell this product is you have a short filled a side uh, which is your resin and you're gonna put your pigment into that side. So you look at the can, you open it up and say, oh, wow, these guys shortchanged me. Well, they didn't. They've left room in there so that you could put your pigment. And then this is gonna bring it up to the full gallon, okay? So we have a part A and a part B. We mix one to one, okay, which changes from products if you're using an epoxy, uh, which we're gonna use later today, you're gonna have a different mixing ratio. So mixing ratios are very, very important because when you mix it, there's nothing visible that you can say that you mixed it incorrectly, okay? You'll only know that the next day or hour later when it doesn't dry. So your mixing person, very important. So what we did here, we put down some plastic because this stuff tends to get messy. So we want to make sure that we protect our work area, especially if you're in someone's house, you don't want to track that stuff around. So put down some plastic because believe me, accidents happen. You don't want to knock one of these over. So we're gonna start by mixing the color pigment. We're gonna do a, uh, an orange first. So we have 16 ounces of color pigment. Uh, this product requires 32 ounces. So we're gonna take two 16 ounce pods. So you, sir, have another one, thank you. So, okay, just hang on to that one for later. We wanna make sure that the pods, you know, they've been sitting on a shelf someplace, so they are pigments. Make sure you stir them up well first, okay? You wanna get everything uh, from the bottom mixed into there. Um, part A here, Alejandro, we opened up. We're gonna just stir this quickly, I guess, with a uh, wooden stir stick will be good. Then we'll put these both into there. We'll mix them um, completely. And then we're gonna mix part B into part A. When you mix those two together, that's when a chemical reaction occurs and that's when you have to start your timer as far as your application. So you wanna mix it quickly get it out of the bucket quickly, get it onto the floor. So make sure you have your room, your area, your hallway, whatever you're doing prepped, you have a plan as far as you know where you need to go, how you're gonna come out of the room, where you're stepping. Because you don't wanna start tracking stuff throughout the rest of the house or your job site, right? So again, proper preparation. Uh, Alejandro went over the uh, HP Spartacoat, which actually Laticrete um, system of polyaspartic. And he showed you how to use the broom for when you're applying the uh, material down on the floor. We're gonna do the same thing here. And we're gonna follow that with a back roll with an 18 inch roller. Okay, it's 3 8 inch nap. This is something you're gonna have in your, you know, in your toolbox at all times when you're doing these projects. Obviously the roller is not something that you're going to save, but the frame is. Uh, all of these, products that we're using will be cleaned up with xylene or denatured alcohol. Xylene probably works better for cleaning, I think. Correct. Um, so if we get this off here, let me just slide these. Everybody familiar with this? It's kind of like, kind of like a toilet paper roller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. So I have a question. Was that, already, that was already wrapped? Start applying it to the roller cover. And in, by doing this, what you're doing is you're, you're putting the sticky side down, obviously and you're gonna just cover your roller and you're gonna pull it back off and you're gonna remove any of the fibers. Somebody steady up that stick one, thanks. 
So you're gonna you're gonna roll off the fibers, and this way help eliminate uh, some imperfections in the in the coating. All right. So we'll do this. Look at this. This is working out great. Ooh. So when you when you guys yeah when you guys uh, set yourselves up on a job site, you're gonna need to have somebody who's mixing. Right. They need to be responsible. They need to understand the um, the, the job site, and they need to work together with you because. When you're pouring the product, you're focusing on spreading it, making sure inside's working, right? Then when you're calling for product, they need to mix it efficiently, get it back inside to you. So, one of the, so, this, so we've got this wrap, we're gonna pull this off. We're gonna have the fibers come off. And then this roller should be good to, to use. All right, so we're good. So we've got our broom, we've got our roller. Spikes are going to keep you up out of the um, out of the epoxy. You're going to walk in there. Obviously, you're not going to walk in your shoes. So this is uh, pretty standard. These we've used for some other things, so you see they're fairly dirty. But these have points on them. So the points typically are the ones you're using for epoxy. There's another set that are blunt, and we use those for an overlay. All right. So <clears throat> excuse me. So two people should have a set of these: the guy who's brooming and the guy who's back rolling. And we're going to put these inside as well. All right. So we're good to go. So we've got our pigment, 16 ounces in each one of these pods. Each kit requires 32 ounces, so we're gonna put 32 ounces in there, two pods. This is the base that we're gonna put down is... Metallic orange. Yeah, we've got an orange metallic, because we're going for a funky looking floor. We're gonna put some orange glitter in there uh, on the decorative coat. So we're going to put, we're going to start mixing these up. Alejandro is mixing with a low speed. You don't want to create a lot of air entrapment into your epoxy. Air is a bad thing when you're dealing with epoxies or, or polyaspartics. It causes a lot of trouble. Yeah, I'm already wet with the weight of the matter. Uh, on my mixing station, I have one of the blooms cut in half. So okay. Bring it egg, it'll be more practical for the blooms. Okay. It should be leaning on the wall, already pressed and ready. Okay. Uh, you know, the pigments, they come out of the jar one color, but certainly you can use two. You can blend things. It's really up to, you know, your imagination. Whenever you're using this stuff, um, you want to try and do some samples first. So that you feel comfortable with your your colors, and then so that the client has a uh, has an idea of what it's going to look like. You can't exactly duplicate the pattern that you're going to make on the floor, but you're going to use the same colors and you're going to try and duplicate it as closely as possible, so that um, whatever sample you made, well, you kind of represent that on the floor. But it just will not be exact, so you should understand uh, and and let the client understand that as well. This one, this one is. <laughs> That's why I grabbed the dented one. I grabbed the, the dented one first. Uh, the scarred that one. We've uh, this this can this can is a, a trooper. That's a dented can of corn. That's yeah, this corn. this is a dented can. Use uh, as I said, this sets up pretty quickly. So you don't if you mix a gallon uh, or two two gallons, um, you should be ready to apply two gallons in your space. So our space is a little bit smaller. Do you think you want to do both gallons? half of the gallon of A. Again, we're mixing one to one. So we're going to use half of a gallon of A um, and we're going to pour a half a gallon of B into it. And that's going to be our working rate, uh, wor excuse me, working um, ratio for our floor that we have inside, which is about 200 square feet. It happens, right? Get some rubber that's gloves, get some rags. Right, you got really thought out. That's yeah, what I said. Before you mix your B and your A, look at your station <laughs> and see what you're missing. Because once, once that A mixed. and B is reacting, you, that's all your time is going to that, no matter if you got gloves on or not. Or not, yeah. And of course, we certainly would have done that, but the beauty of uh, television here, we could take a break. Yeah, that's nice. So, so you want, in the meantime, let's, let's put the, the white into 
And the other part of here, we, we came in, we took off the tiles, the carpet, whatever was in here, we ground the floor down with 30s, and we went in and we patched the holes. All the holes get patched first. And the way we patched that was with an epoxy and a uh, ad additive, which makes up a thick potato consistent paste. And we trowel that on to any of the holes or divots or, or pop outs from nails. And um, then we grind it off to make it smooth or we sand it. You could sand it just with like some 60, 80 grit sandpaper, vacuum, and then it's ready. What do you do for areas like uh, where it's had like battery acid damage from like golf cart or something like, you know? Well, that sounds like you have a particular project in mind. Um, yeah, many, what happened? Many, yeah. yeah. You have to really kind of take care of those things as best you can as far as cleaning them up. Um, because you don't, you want to have your floor have the best bond possible. So you can't really have oils or things like that on top. So you have to grind it, clean it, um, use degreasers or some of the products you'll find on the shelves. It, as, far as, as far as going over it then, uh, you know, I'm going to ask Alejandro if there's any other tricks if other they, than you know what we're talking about do you yeah, have any for yeah for floors i mean let's say you got a mechanic shop converted to an office building for example uh, if you have 50 years of saturation of oil it's not going to work yeah stay with right. that's that's not going to work it but if there is you know light areas you can do a heavy duty degreaser or i also seen uh people use powdered dish soap and that really uh absorbs it as well too you leave it on there dry it absorbs it but then you wash it down when it dilutes it uh, but how effective, how many times you got to do it, it all depends on how bad the saturation is. Uh, but we got a system on one of our lines, DryTech, it's a, it's a rollout uh, decoupling mat. Okay, so let's say we have that floor with 50 years of saturation. There's no way you're going to chemically bond to anything. You got to create a mechanical bond. What you do is you, uh, you prime the floor uh, with a latex primer, one, uh, one part primer, three part water, so that way it dries tacky. We had these rolls of decoupling mat. It almost looks like, you ever see those uh, floor mats that almost look like spaghetti, yep. but they're flexible? Mm -hmm. Well, this is more rigid, okay? So you, and then you anchor that down on the edges of the rolls and you cap it with three quarters of an inch of underlayment. And then you have a new sub floor to work with and then you do whatever you want to it. Uh, is it cheap? No, but does it work? Yes. I mean, if you have floors that have asbestos underneath it, for example, I mean, you're looking at $80 a square foot just to remove it. Mm -hmm. This is going to be 20, 10% of that. So it's, it has its scenarios, <laughs> extras. All right. Uh, so now so we're, we're good. So you mixed up the ratio of uh, A that we need, correct? Yeah. Two quarts, two quarts here. That gives us a gallon. That'll give us enough to do that one room. We're going to put B in there. I want you a rag to pour. You got that? I'll take the corn. Dim the corn can. So we're going where? To the rim? Two quart. Okay. Yeah, there. Yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys, you're allowed to talk while we're doing this. Good. <laughs> break, break the tension. You know what? I'm making those. There you go. <laughs> How about those Yankees? How about the Cavaliers? Holy yeah. shit, yeah. <laughs> If they pull, pull it, if they, they pull, pull it, every first time if history. they pull that off down three to one. This is a small room, so I'm gonna mix a gallon at a time. That's okay. But if, if this, if I were to do this entire building, I wouldn't want to mix more than one gallon of material at a time. I want to be pouring fresh ribbons. Okay. So let's say we have the air conditioning working on here, so that's gonna work in our favor. Let's say there was no AC in here. How can I recuperate some of that time? When I can show the material, that helps. But also we have uh, xylene here too. You're, you can extend this material up to 10% with xylene to extend it. Okay, that's gonna buy you an extra five minutes or so. In coding language, that's a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, all right, let's mix in then. Let's, let's get sticky. We got let's, our brooms there. Yeah, you wanna go, yeah, yeah. shoes are already in the room. Let's just go you. over there real quick. Let's Everything's ready sure. for you in the room. It is? Yep. Okay. Your shoes, your roller, and your hey, you um, can present the, broom. You can pour the party in there. You good? All right, guys, here we go. And then it won't do anything until we put the bee in, so... Hey, where's that box that had the stick in it? Right here. Yeah, I'm
All right, you go out to some careful trips and then we got to drive. So we're back, we're day five, we're part two of putting down an epoxy floor system. Uh, earlier this afternoon, we put down a base coat with uh, a polyaspartic. We tinted that with a metallic orange, and that's going to set us up for our, our uh, decorative coat, which we're going to do with an epoxy uh, blend of glitter. All right. So this is a little bit different in mixing. This is a two to one ratio. So again, it's critical if you have a guy mixing out on the station that you trust him, he understands what you're doing, and that you don't mix up the buckets, all right? So when you get our system here, they're colored, uh, color-coded, so part A is yellow, and then part B is blue. Each one is a gallon, so this is a three-gallon kit, all right? So what happens is we're gonna put our A component into the bucket, we're gonna, we're gonna mix up three gallons at once here. We're gonna put our A component into the bucket, and again, similar to what we just did before, we're just doing it with a, an epoxy now instead of polyaspartic. So we want to try and get everything in there. So once I start this, I'm going to be inside. We're going to use a notched squeegee to put this down. All right. So we found that putting this down with a notched squeegee and not back rolling it will help avoid air bubbles. Okay. When you start rolling uh, into epoxy, you're, you're agitating it. You're, you're moving the product back and forth and you're introducing air bubbles, which will later come back to haunt you. All right. So everything you could do, do to avoid that will be beneficial for the end product. So far, so what we're doing is just one a component. It's it's the A right now. We're going to mix in our glitter, which I separated. This is, uh, that's about seven and a half pounds of glitter. We're going to put about two pounds of glitter into each gallon. So we're going to use about six, uh, six pounds of glitter. And one of the things that, one of the things that I want to show you is that we're going to put our glitter into the, you see this stuff getting everywhere? It's like unbelievable. So just be careful as you're pouring this out. But I want to I want to show you guys once we start mixing this. When you look at it on the stick, you got to really get this mixed up, too, guys. So bear with me. But by by putting that quantity into the uh, into this into this three gallon mix. We're gonna get 100% coverage on the floor. So we're not gonna see through it, all right? So the idea of putting the base down was that in case we miss or, or there is some uh, see-through, it's that the orange metallic or the orange base or whatever your base will show through and will help hide it. So as we start mixing this up, we're gonna use a gauge just as an idea. If you look at the stick through the, if you look at the product on the stick, you can't see the stick. So if you can't see the stick, you're not yeah, gonna be able to see the base. You're not gonna be able to see the floor, correct. So let me just get this out. Now, keep in mind though, we're gonna put a little more in because we're gonna add still one more gallon to this. So I do wanna put a little more. Three gallons going in. Yeah, we're gonna have two parts A, one part B. When you pour part B, part B is the- The dryer, the one this, that- Yeah, this, this right now is the resin. We're gonna put in the uh, hardener. And that's when the chemical reactions start. That's when you have to begin working quickly with your product. You have about 40 minutes to work with this product. All right. So the other one sets up really quick. This one a little bit less. Longer. I understand what you. Why are you using both different? So this one, this what happens with this? This gives you a really thick build. Okay. When you're putting down epoxies or, or, or generally paints, they're talking about mill thickness. Mill thickness equates to the thickness based on a gallon of, uh, of uh, liquid. So, or excuse me, your coverage based on a gallon of liquid. All right, so we're gonna put down about 45 square feet per gallon with what we're doing, okay? So it's very thick. It's gonna be this very- This one you're gonna pour in both room? No, we're gonna pour just this in this room next to us, which we did the okay, orange, on the metallic one. yes, okay. the orange metallic base. So that's just one coach pouring in there. Correct. 
And then you finish with a top coat. You can, this could be your finish coat. Okay. This could be it. You could stop at okay. this point. What's gonna happen is this product actually will separate. So your glitter will fall to the bottom and then you'll get a clear top coat okay. and you'll have a nice translucent look you'll see right through it. Okay. But, uh, still you can but if you top. want, you could put a top coat on that, a clear epoxy, same thing, two parts A, one part B, or you could then put a urethane on top of that as well, or a polyaspartic. Okay. So those are kind of protective coats that could go on top. So Now the thing is, when you're mixing, again, when you're mixing epoxy, if you use a drill, you're getting air in there. So you could actually kind of see some air bubbles going on in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so those are really harmful to the finished floor. So we want to try and minimize how much air we get into into this uh, finished product. So you see, you can't see, you can't see the stick really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, we'll just give it a second, but that's a good indication that you're not going to see through. Okay. When you put this down. Now again, keep in mind it's very thick now. I still have one more pail to add, one more gallon. So I want to add a little more of that product. So do you have that bag? So you're gonna put it three gallons of A. Two gallons two of A, a. one a. gallon a. of B. So now we got two gallons of A. Again. Two gallons this of A. This is for the last one. No, no. No for no. the this completes this completes the chemical makeup of the epoxy. That makes it hard. Yeah. So no, this is the key. Yeah, but you gotta put in just go. Yeah. Well, you don't have to run. You have more time with this product. You have oh, about okay. forty minutes to work with this product. It's not like and then it start one. to set up. The thing is, if you leave it in the bucket, it'll start to set faster. So what you wanna do is have your room prepped, have everybody, you know, understanding what their tasks will be if you have somebody squeegeeing, if you have somebody cutting in edges and so forth, and then the guy mix it. So what you wanna be able to do is mix up your product, be able to pour it down relatively, relatively quickly. You don't have to rush as much as with polyaspartic. All right, so we just wanna talk about how we're gonna apply this. We're gonna take it, after we get it mixed, our components, we're gonna lay it down in a ribbon on the floor, starting at the furthest point close to the wall, and then we're gonna squeegee it out with a notched uh, squeegee here. This is a 3 16 notch. So you could get an eighth inch notch, 3 16 or quarter inch notch, okay? Um, you could follow it up with a magic trowel, okay? And you can use the magic trowel to manipulate multiple colors or help get it into the corners uh, a little bit better. It's more flexible. All right, if you're doing multiple colors, you can pour wet on wet. So in other words, you would put, let's say, silver metallic like we did in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, come back while it's still wet, pour in some orange like we did. Mm -hmm. And then with the magic trowel, you go in and you blend the two colors together. And what happens is, they're both mixed with the two parts A and one part B. Mm -hmm. And what happens is they start to, they, after you blend them together, they start to separate and move and everything starts to self-level and you get really nice designs. So again, you don't have to necessarily be an artist. Um, there's a lot you can do with these products. You can mix multiple colors. You could take uh, acetone or really denatured alcohol is, works better um, to spritz on top of it and that creates effects in the metallics as well. Uh, did Alejandro go over that with you? Yeah. When you, you, guys, with, you went with acetone, but you okay. can use the alcohol too? Yeah, if you, it, if you try denatured alcohol, denatured that works alcohol. real nice too. Yeah, you could put it in a spray bottle and spritz it. If you put it in a stream, it'll kind of do something a little bit different. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, all right guys, so we understand our mix so far. We understand the tools that we're gonna use. And uh, so it looks like we're ready to go. With the Got you on the timer, okay? Okay. So we're gonna mix it for about a minute or so. Just make sure that our components are mixed. So again, one of the things that I did, obviously before you guys get in here, not obviously, but you take these buckets, you wanna mix individually each of the buckets. So you wanna just mix part A together so that it's incorporated anything that may have settled, whatever that's in that bucket gets mixed well. Same thing with B. So all I did was take the buckets, rotated them a little bit, got them mixed up, all right? So when you set your A's together and your B's together, have your guy, you know, prep those, remove the strips from them, so that this way, when you get to this part, now you're mixing component A and component B equally. So if you look here, you don't see the stick. 
right? Yeah. Looks pretty good. So once it's on the floor, it should look nice also. All right, so don't you're mix B just yet. Let's get this one. You're at, you're at a minute. Okay. You're at a minute. This is part of the new Crete surgeon. Yes. Okay. So so Dr. Uh, okay. Dr. So pour a thin ribbon across the length of the wall, right? You go one more. There you go. All right. That's it. Yeah. Let me just get started. You could put a little more down. Then come back my way. And as I'm moving this around, you guys probably, well, hopefully you can see there's some, some of the squeegee marks, some of the notches. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Those are going to settle down and you're going to lose those. Okay. So if you put it down thick enough, those will all disappear. If it's too thin, you'll keep those. And that could or could be, you know, sometimes it adds to the, to the look of the floor. All right. Right, we recommend that you put this on at 30 feet per gallon when you're using the glitter. If you put it on at 50 feet per gallon, you're going to see those those squeegee marks. So he wants to do about half this room with that whole bucket there. That'll take take up to 90 feet. Right. Yeah. So then you can We're going to put it back on this section. Started with us today. <laughs> He's learning also. Do you empty it all? Yes. You'll, you'll see that this is this is using the magic trowel, right? You see that you're just kind of spreading things out. You can kind of create a, a movement in here. But what's going to happen is it's going to level back out. It's going to self-level. But when you have two colors, you're blending them together, and then they kind of fall back on themselves. They they, they do their own thing in the epoxy itself. Right? So we have a nice looking floor. I think this is pretty nice looking. You get a little movement oh, yeah. in there, right? And that was only with the notch trap, right? But you could come in here and, you, and this is where you could do a little designs or anything in your floor, right? And it may not stay exactly the way you see it there, but it's going to make a, a different appearance. When just like. So we're just really what I'm trying to do is push this around. I'm going to let it settle itself. Right? We want to try and get even coverage as we go across. We're gauging based on the room. We're gauging how much we're putting down. So again, talk it up, guys. Talk it up. Awesome. It's not a library. <laughs> Here, give me a little. Give me a little. The next one. But you see, I, I think so far you guys see like there's a little difference there. Yeah. Okay, you can kind of see. And you see how the, the, the lines went away? You can't play with that. You can come back, yep. You don't, you just don't want to keep going, keep going, keep going, playing, 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 and it's like, uh oh. So you got to know your limits. Yeah. But you have more time. Yeah. You said it's 40 minutes, right? It's about 40 minutes, yeah. Of course, the longer you get into that 40 minutes, the, you know, the tackier it's going to be. Alright, so we're going to give me a little more along this wall. Easy, 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 yeah. easy. Don't go over the door.
Anyways, um, I know that with Robert here explaining everything that we've done today that um, there's still gonna be questions, okay? Always feel free to call us at any time you have questions about how, the, how to install the product, okay? Uh, we saw all the product, we saw all your different uh, pods of color, we saw your glitter, we saw your straight colors, um, and we saw your vinyl flakes, okay, or your, your colored quartz. Um, anyway, so what we did today on this floor that you see right here, the orange one, um, we basically, we, we ground the floor and prepped the floor, we put down our, our base coat, our base coat was a, uh, the primer coat was a white, we then mixed the actual orange tangerine colored glitter into the clear resin uh, at two pounds per gallon, and then uh, we poured that out, we, we did our edges, and we, we used a squeegee, and we did the, uh, we squeegee it. Anyways, that floor is now done, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our mixed color, which is we're gonna be coming back with a combination of silver and orange. So stay tuned and watch how this one's done. We got Bill and John joining us for this one. Call, visit our website at www.xtremepolishingsystems.com um, and you can shop online there, it's a secured site. You can pay off a of PayPal or put your credit card direct through. Um, that's what most people do. A lot of people just call us because we can tell you exactly how many gallons you're gonna need for part of the job. Makes it a lot easier. But anyways, shop with confidence on our website. Always 100% money back guarantee, okay? You will be satisfied with our product, so don't hesitate to shop and buy, okay?